Good evening, Lizzie boys, and welcome back to my channel. Today we've got some minor Monster High doll news to go over. Mostly G3 stuff, no G1 stuff at all, except for a brief mention of the Cree Productions allegedly releasing on April 1st. That's all I'm gonna say about it. Apparently it'll be on Amazon. That's all I'm gonna say about them in the video, though, because we don't have stock photos or anything to look at. It's, it's just that. Anyway... Today we're going to be talking about some G3 stuff. We got to see Clio's uh, core refresh box, and these dolls are all currently available for pre-order from Palmart, meaning that the guy doesn't have them yet, but, you know, they're on the website. You can pay five extra dollars if you want for them. And we have some more pictures of that weird uh, Laguna and Claudine two-pack, and also we need to talk about that book. We need to talk about the weird book, and we're going to do it. We're going to talk about the weird book, so without further ado... Let's dive right into this, frankly, shit show. We'll start with the doll stuff, just because it's more comprehensible, I would say. So, out of the core refresh dolls we've seen so far, the only one we had not gotten to see in the box so far has been Cleo. These stock photos just went up today from Palmart. These dolls are currently available for pre-order, meaning that the seller does not have them in stock, but you can pre-order them, and when he does have them in stock, he'll ship them to you. But, um, yeah, so... Core Refresh Cleo. We got to see her artwork, which we didn't really get to see in full before. It's very pretty, does seem to be Darko's style, and I like it. I still am just not a big fan of this box style. It, it's just not very creative. I really hope that they stop using it soon, but I don't think they will because so far all of the core G3 dolls have used this style of package, so I don't think they're going to abandon it any kind, anytime soon. I'm just not a fan of it. I don't like the random colors in the background. I like the back of the box, but that's kind of it. I just wish that the front of the box was as fun as the back is, you know? But that's just a general complaint. Overall, this Cleo looks great, and I need her in my collection immediately. We also got to see the back of Frankie's box, which I don't believe we had seen previously. We've seen the front of their box. I love this doll. I will defend the pink. I really like it. <laughs> I didn't expect to. I remember when the change was first made, I hated it. But as time goes on, I really like the pink. I vibe with it. I think they look good in pink. Anyway, we got to see the back of their box as well. And again, I love the artwork. Like, the artwork is just really pretty. I really like that. Although their other leg looks very shiny. You know, the one that doesn't have a prosthetic on it? It looks very, like... Oh, wait. I know why. It's because the doll's wearing a mesh. A fishnet on just one leg. <laughs> I'm dumb. I forgot that they were just wearing one fishnet. And on to this two-pack. So I got these pictures from Cleo's Nile, but they are from another user who I will credit in the description. I'm sorry, I don't remember their username at the second. But this is that weird uh, Claudine and Laguna two-pack that we found originally through Taobao, and people have like since been able to order it and have it in their hands. This is one of the strangest versions of it, because the back of the box looks like this, which... I feel like we've seen the back of the box previously, and it did not look like this. So, it's interesting, to say the least. It seems like some sort of sample or something, because the dolls look so awkwardly placed. And almost, like, photoshopped together. Like, they just look off, you know? I don't know. Maybe this is the back of the box that we've- this is the only back of the box we've seen, but I feel like we've seen another one. I just don't remember for sure. I could be wrong. If I am, then like, just ignore this whole segment, but yeah. As for the dolls themselves, Claudine does seem to use her saran blend just based on the paler color. The brighter color. Because Claudine's hair is always a brighter, more lilac color, whereas when she has um Polly, it's like more- uh dull. The color is more dull. It's like the only way I can describe it. As for Laguna, I'm not sure. Um, her hair looks very yellow, if that means anything. I don't like this Laguna anymore. I don't know. I just don't vibe with her. <laughs> um, I think I like Claudine more in the set, but I'm just not a big fan of this set in general. It just feels much lazier than, say, the Creepover Party set did, because I like that one. I really liked the Creepover Party set with the reused bed. Uh, like, I didn't keep the bed, but I like the dolls from it. They're fun. They're cute. These two, I just don't feel the same towards. I appreciate the unique makeup. I appreciate, like, the new outfits and stuff. But as it stands, I just 
don't really like this set anymore. I'll probably get it just for Laguna completionist's sake, but yeah, definitely gonna wait for a sale on this one. I hope it comes to Sam's Club so it goes on sale for like 35 bucks the way the one did last time. All in all, their makeup is fun. Uh, Claudine's seems to be new. I don't recognize Laguna's either. I like Laguna's makeup. Okay, Laguna's not terrible, but she's just kind of, like, mediocre, you know? Like, this is probably now my new least favorite Laguna, when previously my least favorite Laguna was her basic. Now it's this one. Basic Laguna is officially out of the doghouse. Or fish tank. Let's talk about Laguna, actually, in The Weird New Monster High Book, Once Bitten, Twice Dead. I mentioned this, I referenced it in a video yesterday, and a lot of you did not know what I was talking about, so I'm just going to read the book description now. When a horrific loss throws Monster High into a state of grave upheaval, upheaval? Never heard that word before. Draculaura and the other ghouls find themselves coping in different ways. Cleo and her family sense opportunity in the mayhem, grasping at control and leaving the rest of the ghouls' loyalties divided. For her part, the chaos at school is making Draculaura sick. She feels more exhausted by the day and can only... And she only finds escape by slipping away to the cemetery to pour over her mom's old journals. It is there she meets Poe, a handsome human harboring some darkness of his own. Soon, Draculaura finds herself caught in an impossible web of lies. If her ghoul friends find out she's fallen for a normie, they'll freak. And if Poe discovers she's a vampire, his monster-hunting dad may have a stake in the matter. I'm just gonna save my comments until I'm done. Meanwhile, the dangerous events at Monster High have begun plaguing... Oh, dangerous events have been plaguing the halls of Monster High. The gargoyles stage a mutiny, and the water in the swimming pool boils while Laguna is swimming laps. When the magical protections around the school borders falter and a group of normies stumble onto campus, Draculaura and the other ghouls know something needs to be done before Monster High becomes Monster Die. Fuck, this is so cheesy. But there's a secret about Draculaura that no one, not even Poe or the other ghouls, or even she, was aware of until now. A secret tied to the school's very marrow. When Draculaura and Gulia uncover an ancient texts that reveal the full implications of her identity, Draculaura is forced to make an impossible choice that will alter her identity forever. Will her loyalties to Monster High determine all their fates? Or will Draculaura succumb to a dangerous passion that makes her feel more alive than she ever has? So firstly, what the fuck? Um... <laughs> And secondly, where is Claude? I'm not even the biggest Draculaura and Claude shipper, but who the fuck is Poe? And why is Draculaura, like, emotionally cheating on Claude with him? <laughs> secondly, the big event that was discussed was revealed here in this secondary description. Draculaura passed away. I mean, Dracula. Fuck. <laughs> Dracula died. So... The plot of this book starts off with Dracula dying, and this shakes Monster High so much that everybody goes crazy. I guess Cleo's back to being a villain, because it says her family is trying to grasp a control, and it says it includes her in it, so it seems like she's also taking part in this. And then it says that the water in the swimming pool boils while Laguna's swimming laps, which some people are taking to mean Laguna was boiled alive and killed. So, um... Yeah, I'm gonna be real. I don't know what any of that means. I just, um... <laughs> and the craziest part about all of this is that the author is trying to claim that this is canon. Like, this is wholly canon. Like, obviously, don't go attack the author, please. Don't harass the author in any way. I'm sure some people already have been ever since this book was announced and stuff. But as you can see, someone asked if the new book is canon or a separate universe, and she claims that it's canon to the OG Monster High Gen 1 with a vampire emoji. So, um, yeah, interesting stuff. I don't know if the questions posed by Cleo's Nile down there got answered. I just swiped this post from their Instagram and decided to put it in my video because I'm too lazy to make my own graphics. So, in short, this book is utterly bizarre. It is a YA novel, and I don't know if that means that the content is, like, intentionally more adult, like, with all the death and stuff, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna say this book is most likely not canon to anything, because why would it be? 
(laughs) This is a very strange piece of literature. And considering that the other Monster High books that have been written, like the original, like, book, I think there was like four of them, maybe, quadrilogy, that was like written back in 2010 when Monster High, like, first launched, nobody considers those canon. So I'm just gonna say it's the same for this one. Most likely, this book is not at all canon and is just something that Mattel outsourced to make some extra money off the Monster High IP. Also, this, um, I forgot to read this, but basically it says that the Niles stage to seek a coup, a coup, do you say, is it coup? I don't know. It's to usher Monster High into a new era, and Draculaura says that she's starting to feel human. So, I mean, that part is canon. Draculaura was a human before Dracula turned her into a vampire, because um, I don't know if you guys know Draculaura's backstory, like the canon one that's revealed with her collector doll diary, but basically her and her mother lived with Dracula, and they both caught a deadly disease. It was probably the plague or something, and Dracula was unable to save Draculaura's mother. He was too late, so he turned her to at least save her. So um, that's Draculaura's backstory. It seems like that's being referenced here, like that's what's being referenced here with her feeling human, like maybe since Dracula's dead, the vampire who turned her is dead, maybe that means she isn't one anymore? I don't know how it works, but yeah, maybe it's like the original vampire rules where like everyone turns back when the original vampire dies. I'm not actually sure how vampires work. So yeah, Laguna and Claudine dolls, back of the box, front of the box and several dead Monster High characters. I hope you guys enjoyed this video because His Fits Torelai, guys. His Fits Torelai. Allegedly, she's going to be releasing in the summer. I can't wait for His Fits Torelai. I can't wait for the summer. Over the summer, I am going to go to England. So yeah, um, <laughs> I needed to talk about that book. It's been on my mind ever since we like found out about it because it's just so, it's so bizarre. It's like the only wit that's the only word I can use. It's the only way I can describe it. It's weird. It's bizarre. It's strange. It's it's downright goofy and silly. <laughs> so yeah, um, feel free to leave your thoughts on the things we've discussed today in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye!